What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteNext.com. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about how to make you stronger in the fastest way possible. And I'm gonna tell you this right off the bat. This is going to be a very simple video. Not necessarily easy, because the hard work that has to come from implementing what I'm gonna tell you here is never going to be easy, but simple in the fact that this is not complicated. We all know there's two things, guys, that will actually produce the most amount of strength the fastest, and that is choosing compound exercises as the basis of what you do, and number two, progressively overloading them. And the beauty behind progressive overload and compound exercises is that they actually go hand in hand. Because of the multiple muscles participating in these compound movements, we have a great capacity to add weight significantly to that bar to allow us to do this. Now, we run into some problems down the road when we start to reach plateaus, but for beginners, my God, it's actually one of the best ways for us to reach those new heights in, what, in terms of what we can produce strength-wise. However, I've also pointed out here before that when we take this approach, we have to be very, very sure that we're working on filling the gaps and not leaving cracks in the foundation along the way. It's not enough to just simply perform the exercises we know are supposed to be the big ones, the big compound lifts, and kind of bastardizing them along the way in the, in the, in the pursuit of numbers alone. Pursuing numbers alone will almost always leave behind cracks in the foundation of those exercises that you're gonna have a hard time repairing as you build on that. You build what I call uh, compensatory strength on the top of a weak foundation. What we wanna do is build true strength along the way. So what are the compound exercises? That's again, simple guys. We, this is, we're not breaking ground here with what we're saying. We know that if we're gonna do something, let's say pressing, we gotta press. What I like to do is I, I wanna press vertically, I wanna press horizontally. So we're gonna do an overhead press, not, not behind the neck guys, I've covered that before, why that's actually not biomechanically the best place to press from anyway. We wanna press from in front of our body and we wanna do a bench press. And typically, again, I, like, I prefer a, a slight incline, about a 30 degree incline on an incline bench, um, as opposed to a flat out bench press. That covers our pressing. Pulling, we want to we want row, and we want to make sure that we're doing some sort of, again, a, a, a vertical pull, and for me, that would be a weighted chin up. Now, we can go in a weighted pull up, I like that too, but by getting our elbows out in front of our body, yet again, safer for our shoulders, and number two, we recruit the lats in a better way because we put them on stretch once we get our elbow, elbows in front of our body. So there's our pulling. So far, pretty simple. Then we have our lower body. It's, it's, it couldn't get any more simple here, guys. Squats and deadlifts. Anterior chain, posterior chain. At least much more dominantly posterior chain for the deadlifts. The fact is, guys, is that these exercises are great because they allow us to perform in a way that is athletic, right? We know that athletic movements are going to require multiple muscles to work together, not in isolation. So I like them, and they are a foundation for building athleticism. However, we're gonna get back to that in a second. When you do them, guys, when we program these foundational movements into all of our training programs, all of them, because we realize how important they are. When you do them, let's just say, I've used this example before, in, in a bench press, you've got your triceps, you've got your shoulders, you've got your chest all contributing to that lift. Well, why are they so effective at, being, at strength generators? Why? Because we can load them. We can load them significantly because you take a muscle like the triceps, the shoulders, and the chest, each having their own strength capacities, and you pair them up synergistically. These are agonists working together in synergy for a common goal, to press that bar off of your chest. In every circumstance, the combination of muscles that work together is going to be higher with a better strength capacity than what could be performed by any one of them individually. We know that. That's why isolation exercises aren't necessarily the best way to attack your strength. However, we do know, as I pointed out before, that at some point down the road, you might want to start individually trying to address these component parts, knowing that as each one of them gets stronger, the overall impact of the whole is going to improve. We realize that, but for beginners, most of all, those just looking to get strong fast, they would focus on the one exercise they could do that's going to incorporate the three, and that's what we want to do. However, Here's what I talked about where we wanted to make sure we address what could happen here. And what could happen is if you're singularly focused on strength, you're gonna leave holes behind. I guarantee you're gonna leave holes behind. It could be in the form of, of, of imbalances, it could be in the form of muscle weaknesses, it could be in the form of uh, uh, neglecting other, other elements of athleticism, right? Guys, we know that just because you're strong does not mean you're a good athlete. There are a lot of oafy people walking around, big meatheads that are strong as shit that couldn't do one simple athletic endeavor, not one. Couldn't, couldn't run a 300-yard shuttle in less than 45 seconds. Couldn't jump, do a box jump on anything over 40 inches. That's, that's pretty bad. You, know, you need to have some level of athleticism on top of your strength 
if you're trying to be overall much more impressive than just, again, singly focused on one element. But I mentioned those, those, those uh, susceptibility to injury. Why? Well, we talked about in, in recent videos, if you move in one plane all the time, that's ultimately, while building a critical component of, uh, of athleticism, which is strength, it's also leaving many vulnerabilities behind because we don't move in one dimension. Always training in the sagittal plane, the deadlift, the squat, the bench press. Always training in the sagittal plane here is leaving you very vulnerable to the other planes, right? We know we, we need to ultimately be able to move and, and, and thrive in all three planes. So we need to train there. And that's why when I t look at a, a complete training program, it's not always about, uh, about strength. You can never, Athlete Next is not the place to come if you want to become the next Thor Bjornsson. And I love Thor Bjornsson. Guy's literally the world's strongest man. But he's also, this is his craft. This is his area of expertise. He applies a level of science to it and a level of respect to the process that it deserves. Not just some guy who likes to bench 350 pounds, that's where you're going to go to for all your advice, you know, or claims to have a 500 pound, you know, uh, squat, and that's where you're going to go to for all your advice. Guys, that's not how you should be selecting your criteria for who you should listen to. Listen to the person who's excelled in that area. And the area that, that, that I believe I excel in is creating the well-rounded, all-around athlete. Because I know that athleticism is about more than just strength. You build your foundation on that. All of our programs build the foundation around strength movements, around the core compound exercises because of the value they provide, as I just told you. But you know you need to, at some point, start to explore that frontal plane. You need to explore the transverse plane. You need to explore corrective exercises. I know they're boring. I know they're kind of, you know, the little sissy things that you see people doing, right? With rotator cuff and face pulls and... Guys, there's a reason why it's so important, because we're filling the gaps that, 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 that the big exercises don't provide. And we also know, I, I've actually seen this firsthand, Carlos Beltran, one of the best athletes I've ever worked with, one of the strongest athletes I've ever worked with. We go in, into any lower body-based movement, his strength was phenomenal. You go to try to check his internal rotation strength or external rotation of his hips, it was incredibly weak. How is that possible? Because we didn't train it, or he wasn't training it until we started to train it. When we did, he became even a better athlete, and he had longevity, right? People thought he was going to hang it up. He stayed around for nine more years and excelled. That's the point. If you want to be a complete athlete, and I'm not even talking about if you want to compete athletically. I'm saying you want to function as a complete athlete. You've got to focus on your mobility. You have to focus on your flexibility. You have to focus on your ability to move in space, your agility. You have to focus on your ability to accelerate and decelerate. You have to focus on your ability to generate power. You have to focus on your strength, but it's a component. It's not the only thing. So guys, I, I, I hope you see the value of this. Again, if you're a beginner, you just want to look like you, know, you lift, great. Strength only is a great way to go. But realize there's going to come a point where you're likely going to have to start introducing some of these elements. And I hope it's not because you've painted yourself into a corner because of your obsession with strength. And God forbid you painted yourself into a corner because it was a, an obsession on numbers alone and you kind of left all those cracks in the foundation. It's a great foundation. It's, it's, a, it's, it's what you should build yourself off of, but you got to make sure that you're not leaving around on a shaky foundation. So I, I, I lead you down that road with, with caution. However, I will tell you this, guys. Again, we can simplify the process it's never been a complex process, but it's one that I think we need to have a little bit more respect for. Don't settle for being one-dimensional. Realize the potential of adding strength to the entire picture and realize how much you can excel then, and that's when we've achieved what we're trying to achieve. So guys, I hope this clarifies uh, any questions you might have. We actually have a, a perfect workout series that we came up with that try to take this approach. Right? Even in, in the example of a, of a chest workout, we know that Pressing through here, through a push-up, through a dip, through a bench press, while taking an exercise through its full range of motion, is not taking the chest through its full capacity, the range of motion through the shoulder joint of what it's capable of. None of them adduct the arm across the chest. That's a hole. That's a hole that's going to come back and wind up biting you later on uh, down the road. Because you're not, you're not strengthening the chest through its full range of motion via the joint it's attached to in, in, in crossing. So we need to do that, and we've actually tried to work those in into those exact workouts. But just to give you more of an idea of when you're trying to fill the gaps, what it would look like. So guys, if you haven't seen those videos, make sure you check them out. They're on our YouTube channel here. If you haven't already done so, subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss those. If you're looking for complete programs that take these foundational exercises as the foundation of what we do and builds off of it to make sure we leave no holes behind, 
Those are all of our programs available over at athletics.com. In the meantime, if you found this video helpful, leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know what else you want me to cover, and I'll do my best to do that for you in the days and weeks ahead. See you soon.